If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow lads of the Saints, Ken Z Red Show here and it's that time of the week once again where I go through the latest gaming news, rumours and of course those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. It is of course the Trophy Achievement Podcast. How is it going today folks? I've got some big news as we start edging towards E3. We are two months away from the biggest gaming show and tell of the year. And my goodness me, I cannot wait to see how this all plays out. This is going to be a brilliant year. I can feel it. We've got news from Ubisoft, the boss, saying longer game lifespans aren't just about making money. Thank you, Ubisoft. Take notes, EA. And speaking of E3, Xbox is going to start teasing some of its E3 2019 games as early as next week. Oh boy, man, that's going to get people excited. Um, How people are making Gibraltar useful in Apex Legends. That's going to make things very interesting indeed. Um, You can get a limited edition Pikachu, uh, Pikachu um, trading card, or a limited edition Pokemon trading card, on the opening weekend of... Detective Pikachu, when that comes out. Uh, the entire Star Wars pinball collection is coming to the Nintendo Switch. More on that. And there's also news on PlayStation as well. You can finally change your PSA name. But there is a little um, drawback to that. Um, Dragon Age We've got news on Dragon Age 4. We've got the latest games that are coming to Xbox Game Pass. Some of them out today at time of recording. And in the points and trophy section at the end of the show, we have got Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. It came out last month, but I am doing it now because at the time I was on hiatus on my channel. Before we get into the news, a big shout out as always to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. Keep the games as long as you like or keep them forever at a discounted price. You can play the latest games for as little as $9.99 a month. So you won't be short of options on what to play throughout the year. And, and that means, like me, you'll have a pretty good list when it comes to putting together your top 10 games of the year. That is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Of course, that jingle means that we have a gaming screw up of the week. Now, this one technically happened last week, but hear me out on this one. April 1st, we were supposed to get Star Wars Battlefront 2, the real Star Wars Battlefront 2, not the loot box scandal filled monetizing monstrosity that is EA's Battlefront 2. Uh, as part of the backwards compatibility program, I had to wait until the next day. And the reason why that is a gaming scrap of the week is because it was advertised to be out on. April 1st. Now I'm definitely not calling I'm not calling Microsoft out for pulling that as an April Fools, but they advertised it was going to come out on April 1st and I had to wait until the 2nd. Therefore, that is poor customer service on Microsoft's end. You can't afford to be making mistakes like this. And I had people have the nerve to call me out. I mean, oh, because you didn't get it in April 1st, you should be grateful you had it in the first place. I am one for delivering 
the customer service that the fans deserve. If I say something is going to be out on April 1st, I make sure it's out on April 1st. They didn't even give us a valid reason. They didn't give us any reason as to why we had to wait almost an entire day. I am severely disappointed with Microsoft on that front. And also, they've also increased their Xbox Live subscription cost to $49.99 for 12 months. Which begs the question. That begs the question. Ah, uh, Which begs the question. I mean... They said they're bringing it in line with the They said they're bringing it in they're bringing the subscription cost in line with the rest of Europe which I can only assume is the reason why Sony have done the same with PlayStation Plus and they still haven't given us a reason as to why they increased their subscription cost which means yes that's going to be £100 a year for Xbox and PlayStation if you want to play online. I mean, dare I say, Microsoft better justify it with some pretty damn good games on the, X, on the uh, Games with Gold program. And so far they're delivering. They are giving us original Xbox games as part of the Games with Gold program. And I like that. But still, don't mess up like that again, Microsoft. Please. Anyway, on to the news itself. And let's start off with Ubisoft. Now, now this is from Joseph Noop on IGN. So, here we go. These days, more and more big budget games are turning into what's called games as a service, lengthening their lifespans and introducing new content on a regular basis in order to keep players enticed for more than just its first week. Think Destiny, Fortnite, and now Ubisoft's The Division 2. While the growth of games as a service hasn't always been a favourite trend among gaming audiences, Ubisoft CEO Eve Gilmore thinks it's about way more than dollar signs. Because we put a lot of time and effort into creating universes, cities, and worlds, what we try to do is give possibilities to stay there for a long time, with lots of different gameplay and the possibility to be with your friends, Gilmore said on this month's IG episode of IGN Unfiltered. Why do you want to redo everything each year if you can improve and increase the experience in one game? It's easier for us to improve and increase the number of possibilities that the game can bring rather than starting from scratch. On this latest episode of IGN Unfiltered, editor Ryan McCaffrey, McCaffrey sits down with Gilmore to discuss his humble beginnings, how the Tom Clancy brand launched Ubisoft into the big leagues, just how terrifying the big takeover attempt from Vivendi was, and more. Now that's very interesting. At least Eve Gilmore and Ubisoft can actually see the light. While yes, they still don't understand the meaning of the word difficulty, which I'm still annoyed with them with. But, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Um... So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that I'm excited. doesn't change the fact that I'm excited about uh, seeing where this goes. And uh, apart from that, EA, take notes. This is how it's done. Why do you know in EA? They never listen to their fans. Never have, never will.
So, Anyway, um, so let's get into the next piece of news, and it's regarding E3, my first big piece of E3 news. We're a couple of months away from the biggest gaming show and tell of the year. Xbox is going to start teasing some of its E3 2019 games as early as next week. Ooh, goody gumdrops. This is going to be interesting. E3 2019 is starting early as next week's Inside Xbox promises some announcements about the show. Are we going to get some details of Ori and the Will of the Wisps? Please! I want to play the game, please! <laughs> Inside Xbox, Microsoft's series of monthly live streams designed to showcase up the upcoming features and titles on the way to Xbox One is returning on Tuesday, April 16th. It promises to be a big one and we could even get some news about Gears 5. Announcing the next Inside Xbox stream on its news blog, Microsoft explained the hour-long episode will explore some exciting Xbox Game Pass news. <sighs> Is Xbox Game Pass going to be part of the subscription for your Xbox Live? If so, I'm on board with that! Which could, in turn, justify the, uh, the, co the subscription increase. Which I'm, which I'm happy with, I can get on board with that! New details on the much-anticipated anniversary update for Sea of Thieves, special guest Rod Ferguson from The Coalition, first details and footage of the Warhammer Chaos Bane beta, an exclusive look at Rage 2, a handful of exciting back compat announcements, backwards compatible, and several surprises we're saving for the show itself. Ooh, goody goody gumdrops! But that's not all. As part of its Road to E3 2019 campaign, the show will also feature the latest news on E3, including Xbox FanFest and more, suggesting we could be seeing the first teases of Microsoft's slate of E3 2019 games announced or otherwise as early as next week. The fact that Rod Ferguson is making an appearance suggests we'll be hearing more about Gears 5, which is sure to be a keynote title for the Xbox E3 press briefing in June. Microsoft is no doubt getting ready to unveil some of its top secret titles as we edge nearer to the release of Xbox Project Scarlet. But whether it decides to mention, to make mention of them at Inside Xbox is another question entirely. It could well be that Xbox, Inside Xbox will merely outlay Microsoft's organizational plans for E3, including the date and time of its press briefing and nothing more. In any case, you'll be able to watch the show live and online from 2 p.m. to 5 p. from 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and 10 p.m. British Standard British Summer time next Tuesday, and we will be covering all of the biggest announcements as soon as they're made. You're on Games Radar, so stay tuned to keep up to date. And that was from uh, Alex Avard from. IGN, uh, no, uh, Games Radar. Evan Latty now uh, gives us this article from PC Gamer. And defying God and science, Apex Legends players are finding ways to make Gibraltar useful. So here's what we have to say. Two months into the game's lifespan, Gibraltar is not considered one of the best Apex Legends. His wide frame is easier to hit than most legends, even after some adjustments in the latest Apex patch. His bubble shield and artillery strike are decent situa situational abilities. But as is often the case in competitive games, players concoct new techniques as the, the meta matures. Breathing new life into underappreciated characters, Gibraltar, as it turns out, is an ideal platform for other characters' throwable items. A recent update evidently made Gibraltar's gun shield sticky, allowing, al allowing Caustic's gas canisters to adhere to them. And because Caustic's gas canisters can be vertically stacked together, up to six can be affixed. 
this configuration persists as long as a Gibraltar as long as the Gibraltar keeps their shield active, which means that Gib can walk around with a weird snake line, weird snake, weird snaking line of poison barrels attached to him. Nice. The effect is sort of like when you stick a bunch of dry erase mark markers together to make a sword. As one Redditor remarked yesterday, it's a special thing when two lower tier Apex characters can work together. For now, the name circulating for this technique is Gib Caustic Joust, and Respawn doesn't seem to be too bothered by it. Behold, our latest innovation in live servers balancing buffs for Gibraltar and Caustic. Seriously though, it's pretty incredible the stuff you folks come up with. This is hilarious and very creative. Apex Community Manager Jay Frischip. Frechette replied on Reddit. But hang on, what if Pathfinder grapples to the tip of this gassy glitch, ab gl gassy glitch abomination? An Apex player and Overwatch amateur player named Domels and his friends made the above breakthrough by throwing the robot in the mix, forming an unholy Voltron of some of the game's less useful characters and in the process accidentally creating Apex's first Olympic event. Hallelujah! The Apex Legends Olympics have begun! The exploit, if you can call it that, is pretty easy to set up. You position Gibraltar on ground and he aims towards the sky while shield is up. Donald's told me on to, Donald's told me over the Discord. Caustic on some area that it that is elevated, for example, open loot box or small cliff or a door. Then after two of two to four canisters, you have to move Gibraltar to some higher to some higher area, for example, the roof of a building. You don't need to be super accurate as long as you don't hit the edges of Gibraltar's shield. Octane's jump pad ultimates can also be stuck to Gibraltar, or the caustic column of doom. <laughs> This version of the technique is more likely to get patched out of Apex, as we're already seeing players use the combo to create some kind of terrifying bouncy Captain America build. That is actually quite clever! I like that! And talking of Apex Legends, they have added a quit penalty purely by accident. This is on GameSpot by Steve Watts. He's the man that wrote this article. Quitting early carries no punishment. For now. So, here we go. Seeing an opponent leave an Apex Legends match early is one of the more irritating facets of the game. As with most games like Overwatch and Call of Duty and FIFA and pretty much any online multiplayer game. But fortunately, developer Respawn has a fix in the works to penalise anyone who does go MIA, missing in action for those who don't know. Unfortunately, the company accidentally set the feature live before it was ready, before quickly disabling it once again. Oh boy. In an update on the Apex Legends subreddit, community manager Jay Freshett Freshette, Freshette, said the studio has been working on the feature, but it wasn't our intention or plan to have it go live with the April 4th update. He says the penalty turned on early due to a piece of missing script, and the studio has since fixed it to disable the penalty. He states it doesn't have an ETA for if or when it will be released. More than likely the former. The 1.1 update included some of some quality of life changes, like allowing you to invite a member of your last squad into your party, and the addition of squad invites to your the friends menu. You can also mute from the you can also mute from the legend select screen. So altogether, it seemed aimed at making the game easier to connect with good teammates and ignore bad ones. I like that. Keep it up, guys. Still, 
The quit early penalty has been one of the most requested features among the community, since revolving around three person squads means that a single premature exit can be a crippling blow to your team composition. The admission that the team doesn't know if the feature will be implemented at all suggests that it is still weighing the idea, possibly against other ways to deal with team composition issues. I say get it. I say get I say get the idea on board. Cause I like it. I like the idea. I like the idea. So anyway. Anyway, here we go. This next article is on Detective Pikachu. And it's from Emily Heller on Polygon, Polygon.com. So, here we go. Detective Pikachu's early screenings will include a special treat due for dedicated Pokemon fans and collectors. According to Warner Brothers, everyone who catches Detective Pikachu during its opening weekend will get a two-pack of Pokemon trading cards while supplies last. Each booster pack will include one randomly selected card from the Pokemon Trading Card Game's new expansion, featuring the photorealistic versions of your favourite Mons. The other card is guaranteed to be a limited edition Detective Pikachu variant, featuring the fuzzy electric mouse taking a much-deserved coffee break. The card is exclusive to these in-theatre booster packs, so hopeful collectors will have to either buy tickets for the opening weekend or wait for eBay listings to pop up. Booster packs for the Detective Pikachu expansion are available now. Excellent. So, and and, and this is this is this is what the this is what it has. This is brilliant. This is what it has. This is brilliant. So, Detective P Detect Detective Pikachu card is basic, ninety HP, which is uh, ninety hit points or health points, whatever you want to call it, and. Um, Attach one energy and you get Coffee Break. Heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. That is brilliant! And then you've got... And then two energies. Corkscrew Punch! 20 hit points damage. I like that! That is brilliant! He was the partner of Tim's father, Harry, who has gone missing. This Pikachu loves the dark... Loves the dark coffee at the Hi-Hat Cafe. <laughs> so... The new trading cards brings an extra blast of nostalgia for millennial Pokemon fans by continuing a beloved tradition. 20 years ago, the Pokemon company released a set of trading cards around the release of Pokemon the first movie. There was even an exclusive silver foil card that could only be procured by renting Mewtwo Strikes Back at a Blockbuster video. Oh, I miss Blockbuster. The more, the more things change, the more they stay the same. A little bit of Bon Jovi there. That's how the Bon Jovi song goes, by the way. Now, that is brilliant. I might actually find that card rather useful. I may just find that card very useful. I only buy, I only really buy the themed decks and I don't really go for the booster packs. Sticking with Polygon, we've got Owen S. Good regarding the entire Star Wars Pinball Collection. It's coming to Nintendo Switch with new modes. Vertical play and the series' first ever physical launch included. Excellent! Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got all 19 tables of Zen Studio Star Wars Pinball coming to Nintendo Switch with a vertical play mode that takes advantage of the Switch's screen dimensions when held sideways. In addition to being sold to the Nintendo eShop, Star Wars Pinball will also get a physical edition release, a first ever for the Zen Pinball for a Zen Pinball suite. Star Wars Pinball will launch for Nintendo Switch on September 13th, 2019, the studio publisher publisher announced today in advance of this weekend's Star Wars celebrations. So, here we go. These so for the record 
For the record, the 19 tables in Star Wars Pinball are as follows. Adaptions of the films A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rogue One, and Solo. They don't acknowledge the prequel trilogy! <laughs> even the... Even the... Even the game devs don't acknowledge the prequel trilogy. <laughs> oh my word, that is brilliant. Adaptions of TV's The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Character-specific tables for Han Solo, Darth Vader, Calrissian Chronicles, Boba Fett, and droids. Uh, Star Wars Battle of Mimban, The Mud Planet from Solo, and Star Wars Ach... 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 To Island. Luke Skywalker's hideout in The Last Jedi. Star Wars Master of the Forces. A Jedi vs. Sith theme with all the major stars of both factions. Starfighter Assault. Imperial Fleet vs. Rebel Fighters. And Might of the First Order based on The Force Awakens. In addition to vertical play, Star Wars Pinball on the Switch will also make use of the console's HD Rumble feature and will offer a Switch-specific career mode that is designed with short, with short on-the-go gameplay sessions in mind. The sweet soundtrack will be playable in a jukebox mode, and a special collection mode will deliver in-game bonuses to help players rack up higher scores. Zen Studios published its first three Star Wars tables in 2013 with Empire Strikes Back, Clone Wars, and Boba Fett, all of which were eventually published to every console, PC, handheld, and mobile platform. Their most recent tables were published in September 2018, Solo, Calrissian Chronicles, and Battle of Mimban. A Mimban. And there we go. Very interesting. I can definitely get on board with that. Now, here we go. PlayStation 4 users can now change their PSN name, but there's a small drawback with that one. Long overdue. This one is from Olivia Tambini on Tech Radar. Go away, notif go away, pop ups. I don't care. I'm not interested. So, so here we go. Sony has announced the PlayStation 4 that PlayStation 4 users users will finally be able to change their PlayStation Network Online ID, according to a blog spot by Sony's social media director, Sid Schumann. The online ID change feature on PSN is officially launching to all PlayStation 4 owners later today. You'll, be, you'll also be able to change your online ID via a web browser later today, April 10th for the US and April 11th for, the, for Europe. Woohoo! Today! Huzzah! You'll simply need to sign in to your PlayStation Network account to do so. The feature appears to be set for release worldwide, but Sony hasn't announced official pricing in Australia yet. So, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Sony says that the change can only be made through a PS4 system or web browser. So, you won't be able to do it on a PS3 or the now discontinued PS Vita. Potential issues. Sony says that the first time you change your ID, the service will be free. But after that, you'll need to pay $9.99 or £7.99, which is around 15 Australian dollars, unless you are a PlayStation Plus member, in which case it will cost you $4.99 or £3.99 $3 here in the UK, which is around 7 Australian dollars. Not all games will support the online ID change feature. Sony says while all PS4 games originally published on or after April 1st, 2018 have been developed to support the online ID change feature, it found an instance where a game did not fully support the feature during its beta preview program last year. Sony also warns that there are a few issues that could arise as a result of changing your online ID, saying you could lose progress within games, including game save data, leaderboard data, and progress towards trophies. For this reason, the company has released a list of tested games that definitely support online ID changes and says that reverting back to your old ID should resolve most issues that arise. Now, how exactly do you go about doing that, though? Anyway, that's very interesting. 
Now I would show you some of the games, I would go through a list of some of the games that are available through this, but um, hey ho. And we've got Gaming Satan, them Gaming Satan themselves. It's Electronic Arts once again. Here we go. Dragon Age 4 reportedly changed course to be more monetizable like Anthem. No, 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 no. Many Dragon Age fans are doubtless very much look are doubtless very much looking forward to to the next instalment of the franchise, but maybe their enthusiasm will be dampened given the latest from the gaming grapevine, which seems to indicate that EA has switched course to the model to model the RPG more along the lines of Anthem. Did you not see how badly received Anthem was? Do you not learn from your past mistakes, EA? Oh wait, they never learn anything. Anyway, this comes from Kotaku um, in an interview concerning Bioware's slow progress with Dragon Age 4. It has, after all, been four and a half years since Dragon Age Inquisition came out and DA4 still languishes in early development. All we've seen regarding the next game is a very brief trailer which popped up last year along with the news that the title is likely to be a good couple of years away from fruition at least. Kotaku's digging on Earth what many will likely find a somewhat disturbing picture of Dragon Age 4, in that apparently the original concept for the game has been abandoned in favour of a more monetization-centric anthem approach. According to the article, the RPG is being built on Anthem's code base and tools adopting a live service component, built for long-term gameplay and revenue in other words. It's more games as a service, although not with a subscription, but rather a steady drip of additional content and microtransactions. That sounds very different to the previous vision that the development team was reportedly working with, which saw Dragon Age 4 as a smaller game than the previous Inquisition outing, allowing it to focus more on being hugely reactive to your actions, with there being choices and consequences aplenty. The overarching idea was to implement branching quests rather than simple fetch this or kill that affairs, and to have a game which was sophisticated and varied enough in terms of its branching to be played repeatedly. So the shift to the new scheme of things will naturally sound disappointing to many RPG fans, but we should abandon all hope at its juncture. This is EA we're talking about. I abandon all hope when they have things like this, and they never listen to their fans until it's too late. So, yeah. Going back to the Ubisoft article earlier, take notes EA from Ubisoft because that's how it's done. You do not make this, monetize this, or monetize that. You do not do that just for the sake of money. As mentioned, the game is still relatively early in development, so this vision could easily change, and some Bioware folks have already defended some time ago the fact that it will be a live service game, or rather clarify that what that will mean. And this is what Casey Hudson tweeted below. Reading lots of feedback regarding Dragon Age, and I think it will be relieved to see what the team is work working on. Story and character focused. Too early to talk details, but when we talk about live, it just means designing a game for continued storytelling after the main story. Okay. It seems many of the devs also insist that it isn't simply going to be Anthem with Dragons. <sighs> EA are telling them to say stuff like this. I know how EA work at this point. It does not surprise me. Although Dragon Age 4 may actually... Uh, Kotaku also observes that it's likely to be an online game naturally, although Dragon Age 4 may actually be delivered in the form of a single player experience alongside a multiplayer facet. RPGs are meant to be single player only, unless you are an MMO, 
which is multiplayer, I can forgive you. But these sort of games are meant to be single player only. But knowing Ye at this point, they don't like single player games. They don't care about single player games. It's multiplayer this and multiplayer that and monetize this and monetize that. Why do you think I've never touched an EA game? Apart from Apex Legends, but that's beside the point. Why do you think I never buy EA games anymore? The latter of which would get the post-launch content and monetization attention. That would be far more palatable to many. Yeah. Keep the keep the monetization for post-game. Do not have it affect the actual game itself. Just do not have monetization in RPGs. Just make it a big game, plenty of hours, plenty of quests, and that's it. You do not monetize an RPG. Unless it's an MMO. That is the only time monetization in an RPG should be acceptable. Because this... <sighs> Thank you, Lemon Grab. All this is completely up in the air, of course, and the title is still evolving constantly by all accounts. And indeed, the report even specifically notes that the game could change based on the negative reception to Anthem. But EA won't do that, will they? The current storm online regarding Kotaku's piece may well then be contributing to the direction which the next installment of Dragon Age takes. We hope it ends up being something more like the original vision described above, that's for sure. In other words, do not have the publisher interfere in any way, shape or form. Right, now that I've got that out of the system, let's look forward to the next set of games coming to Xbox Game Pass. So, this is what we have. So, more games coming to Xbox Game Pass in April. The, this is the list of titles and the dates they will be added. So, bear in mind, this is all at time of recording. So, here we go. Prey, it's out today. Good morning, Morgan. Prey joins the Xbox Game Pass library today, taking you from the comfort of your home to the treacherous depths of space. As Morgan you, you'll have to use your wits, weapons, and strange powers to fight the alien threat that has overtaken the Talos 1 space station. Explore the station, upgrade your skills and abilities, and uncover the secrets of Talos 1 and the dangers within. Now, I, try I played this when it came out last year, uh, back in 2017. And the biggest issue for me was the fact that there was there was no dialogue. One of my friends said at the time, probably audio corruption. And it was at a point where I just thought, you know what, I've had enough of this. I mean, I even had subtitles on and still nothing. But anyway, here we go. The Golf Club 2. Play a dynamic single and multiplayer experience with unlimited possibilities. Take a swing on new lush golf courses or take or create your very own. Intuitive and realistic swing mechanics, infinite hours of gameplay, opportunity to become a pro and prestigious club societies are in store for you in this definitive golfing experience. Now, I'm pretty sure... Now, I'm pretty sure the Masters... Yep. You have got the Masters 
in this game. I'm a bit disappointed they didn't have the Masters in the Golf Club 2018, but... But at least this gives... At least this fills that PGA to avoid. Golf Club 2019, yeah. And it just so happens the Masters is live now. And yep, the Masters are in the Golf Club 2019. So hopefully they keep the Masters in future installments of the franchise. Because like I say, this fills that PGA to avoid that fans have been looking for for a long time. And that is out today as well. Monster Hunter World, April 18th. Enter a living, breathing ecosystem where players become hunters who seek and slay ferocious beasts in heart-pounding battles that unfold across the vast, ever-changing terrain. You are a hunter of the Fifth Fleet, tasked with investigating the mysterious behaviours of the Elder Dragons out in the world. As a hunter, you must use your cunning and skill to track and manoeuvre targets throughout intense, evolving battles. Venture solo on quests or partner up with up to three hun other hunters online for cooperative play. Interesting, very, very interesting. So, next up, Walking Dead, A New Frontier. Players Javier Garcia, disgraced former baseball star, now fighting to protect those he loves in a world plagued by the undead. As humanity is pushed to a breaking point, Javier finds his Fate bound to a young survivor called Clementine! Thrown into conflict with the ruthless new frontier, they must rely on each other to survive and find the family they've lost. Make choices that shape the fate of those around you, engage in thrilling action scenes, and explore beautiful comic book styled environments from The Walking Dead. Life is Strange 2 Episode 2 comes out on April 24th. Run from danger! Brothers Sean and Daniel face another dangerous road during the heart of winter. As Sean continues to train Daniel's growing telekinetic power, they are faced with an unexpected road bump. Daniel's gotten sick and isn't getting any better. Still far from their destination of Mexico, the brothers have found shelter in snowy northern Oregon. Will this be the solace that finally keeps them safe? Sean's key rule, high jaw power, has worked up has worked for them up until now, but what happens if they're turned over to the police? Ooh, boy. And then you've got Resident Evil 5. Coming out on April 25th. The Umbrella Corporation and its crop of lethal viruses have been destroyed and contained, but a new, more dangerous threat has emerged somewhere in Africa. This is where we would cue Toto. Innocent villagers are transforming into aggressive and disturbing creatures. Featuring online co-op, players can experience this Resident Evil classic. I wouldn't necessarily call it a classic as either Chris Redfield, Chris, Chris Punch Boulder's Redfield. We all know what about that one. And all his new partner, Sheva. Oh my, we're trying to play this in single player. Oh, the AI does not work! Sheva Alomar, as the duo must work together to investigate and stop whatever is causing the disturbing turn of events. So, there we go. That is the... So, yeah. Golf Club 2. I can finally play the Masters again. Yay! And now, on to the points and trophies. Well, trophies in this case because we're on PlayStation this week. 34 trophies to get the Platinum trophy, 34 trophies for that Platinum trophy, and that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep, points and trophies time, and it's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, the latest game from, from Software, published by Act. 
Activision. Uh, From Software are known for their Bloodborne, for Bloodborne and the Dark Souls games as well. So, the secret trophies are as follows. Great Colored Carp, to defeat the Great Colored Carp. Green, great Serpent, defeat the Great Serpent. Demon of Hatred, defeat the Demon of Hatred. Ishin Ashina, defeat Ishin Ashina. Gracious Gift of Tears, defeat the Divine Tower and obtain the Divine Dragon's Tears. Corrupted Monk, defeat the Corrupted Monk. Father Surpassed, defeated Great Shinobi Owl at, Hirata, at the Hirata Estate. Great Shinobi Owl, defeat the Great Shinobi Owl. Folding screen monkeys caught the fold screening. Folding screen monkeys. Guardian ape immortality severed. Use the mortal blade to sever the great the guardian apes undying. Guardian ape defeat the guardian ape. Je Genichiro Ashina defeated Gen Genichiro Ashina. Phantom lady the phantom lady butterfly defeats lady butterfly. Gyowubu Masataka Oniwa defeated, however in the world you pronounce it, a Gyubu Gyowubu Masataka Oniwa. And that's your secret bronze trophies. The secret silver trophies are Lazuline upgrade. Use, use Lapis Lazuli to upgrade any tool to its limit. Sword Saint Ishin Ashina, defeated Sword Saint Ishin Ashina. Shura, attained the Shura ending. Dragon's Homecoming, attained the return ending. Purification, attained the purification ending. Immortal Severance, obtained, attained the Immortal Severance ending. Ultimate Healing Gar, good. Fully upgraded the Healing Gurd. Height of Technique, acquired all. And that's your silver trophies, the secret gold trophies, acquired all skills for height of technique, and man without equal defeated all bosses. And now on to the regular trophies. There aren't as many of these regular trophies as there are the secret trophies, but nevertheless, here we go. Uh, bronze trophies, resurrection, returned from the dead using resurrection for the first time. Memorial mob, encountered the memorial mob. Shinobi prosthetic, acquired the shinobi prosthetic. Revered Blade received the the, Kusam, the Kusabimaru from Koru. And those are your bronze trophies. Silver trophies. Master of the Arts grasped the inner mysteries of any combat style. Peak physical strength. Upgraded vitality and posture to their limit. And all ninjutsu techniques acquired. All ninjutsu techniques. All prosthetic tools acquired. All prosthetic tools. And Master of the Prosthetic is a gold trophy, upgraded all prosthetic tools to their limits. And Ashina Traveler, travel to all areas of the game. You get all those trophies, and you get... The Elusive Platinum Trophy! Yep, the Elusive Platinum Trophy. And there we go, just under an hour. And that does it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always... Hit the thumbs up and you want to be baptized into following this channel. Hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I've got Rocket League on the left and on the right you've got my dedicated Season 2 podcast playing. Formula 1 this weekend and we've got more Formula 1 this weekend but it won't be any league racing for me. Oh no 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 no. We're going back to career mode! Haha! <laughs> In the meantime, hope in the meantime, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faith.